there's two main things I want to go through today. The bulk of it was uh, focusing on the review of the um, the editor's draft for the 1.1 version of the opportunity model. Um, just go through the open issues and do a bit of an update there. Uh, just give a quick update on plans to move forward from version 0 0.4 of the booking spec and um, then anything else that we want to, to cover in the any remaining time. Um, so I've, I've sent uh, quite a few updates to the mailing list over the last um, week or so um, just to highlight uh, which proposals are uh, under, under discussion or in kind of um, in the process of being added to uh, the draft specification. Um, so um, what I wanted to make sure is that everyone knew where to find the editor's draft uh, other than just kind of me sending updates. So um, whenever you go to the, with any of the open active specifications in the metadata at the top of the spec, there should be a clear link to the latest editor's draft. So currently the published spec is 1.0 from August last year. You click through and you'll get to what is described as 1.1, which is the draft that I published last week. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go through um, the, the, the changes that I've made, what, what proposals I've made into this release. Um, the other thing that I've been doing is uh, tidy, trying to tidy up the, the issues, the process of making a proposal in line with um, some of the revised governance and process that we talked about on the last call um, and just hopefully make it clear to people at uh, what stage the different proposals are at. So I've put together a um, project board, uh, project kind of backlog um, in GitHub. So if you go to the modeling opportunity data, get a project under the projects there, there is now a board for the specification revisions. Um, so the backlog is just any open issues, including kind of discussions or early proposals. Um, the stuff that's under discussion is the things that we've been actively discussing either in these calls or in discussion via emails or um, uh, on, on GitHub. Um, and then there's a separate column for those things that are now in the editor's draft. So currently, um, the editor's draft I've just shown has got changes for, uh, for the facilities proposal, the age range proposal, and the updates to gender restriction. I'm intending to make some more changes for the amenities work um, to put that in. Uh, the special requirements uh, proposal um, I'm not sure that will make it into the, the release next week. I've, I had some feedback from uh, Jade uh, via email yesterday, which I still need to um, incorporate, but um, look, I need to get some kind of wider feedback from the rest of the group. Um, so I'm gonna go through these kind of four, four proposals now, just so you can see, uh, what, just as a recap, essentially, just a sound check of um, what's in the spec and give people a chance to shout out if they think anything is wrong. Um, there's a few other proposals that I've have, I have filed um, based off uh, discussions that have cropped up before just to kind of give the, just have a focus point for any any ongoing discussion and I've tried to label um, uh, the issues clearly about whether they are a proposal so they're following the kind of the proposal template that is now in GitHub or just a discussion so in my mind a discussion is something that we're at quite an early stage that we know that we need to do something in an area, but we haven't yet formulated the best way forward. Um, so um, I've been doing some work off, uh, off the back of the recent call around virtual events. So started to work that up into a proposal, but there's still some investigation work there before we can finalize the best way forward. So hopefully this will start to bring a little bit of clarity to where we are at with updating each of the specs. So uh, I'm going to go through each of the proposals now very briefly, just so you can uh, give me any uh, feedback or any other thoughts you have. Um, so the first one, uh, sorry, the, the UI is, um, UI for Zoom is getting in the way of me changing the browser tab. Right, hopefully you can see that. Age range. So this is issue 68. 
Um, so the proposal here was that um, based on looking at how people are currently using the age range property, um, it, there's a lot of inconsistencies. Um, um, and it's the feedback we had from the community was that um, the current way that the property is specified, specified which is as a uh, basically as a number or a number range, is a bit fiddly to work with. Um, so we discussed on a recent call about changing this to use a, a more explicit min and max value for the age ranges. So the uh, hopefully you can see the example here which is what the, the, the revised specification now um, recommends. So the age range property will be a have type quantified value. Um, it will have min value and a max value. So this is all stuff that comes from schema.org. There's no new, um, new properties, new model here. We're just revising our age range property to make use of that um, existing language. Um, I've put in some uh, validation rules to start to think so because we need to start to tighten up the use of some of these properties I've put in some definitions around um, uh, what publishers and consumers should be doing or must be doing so an age range property must have a type of quantified value it must have at least one of the min value or max value properties um, and data, data consumers should assume that if there's no age range then it's open, then it is adults only so if there's no age range you have to assume as, it, as if it was specified with a min value of 18 that's to avoid directing um, children at adult events um, and then just discussing that if, if min value is not specified then there's no minimum event if max value is not so minimum age if max value is not specified then there's no maximum age so just to try and make sure that we're very starting to very clearly define uh, some of these properties. So I think that's pretty uncontroversial. When we discussed it, everyone university seemed to be happy with that kind of more explicit approach. Um, any comments on that, or is everybody happy? If an event is open to everyone, regardless of whether they're children or adults, would you do an age range of zero to 120 or something to signal that one? Well, well, because a missing age range would be taken as meaning adults. Yeah, I think I, I did wonder about that. And I've got a note in here um, in, the, in the proposal. So if something is suitable for all, it, you would kind of have to put that explicit number range in. Um, but I couldn't think of any other way to do that without providing a kind of sensible default if people haven't. Um, haven't specified. One option potentially would be to include the age range with the quantified value but without the min and max value. So that's saying everything, whereas an age range with nothing at all is defaulted. So, But, but that makes validation tricky then because it's legal not to provide those properties which opens chance for errors. Mm, okay, yeah. huh? I was just wondering because it, it's not ideal to have to put zero to 120. Uh, I've seen systems that already have that problem, um, where the max value is just an arbitrary thing. Um, so, so Gladstone does that um, because you have to put a number in both fields. Zero is not too bad, but 120 is quite old. But I think they could use 99. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, it does, yeah, it just become a little bit arbitrary. I mean, people do say, like, Things are suitable for everyone from eight to eighty, and things like that. So it's not. Well, what you could do is just have um, a recommendation of min value zero in that case, without the max value specified. I mean, yes. Okay. That 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 sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay, uh, any other bits of feedback on that? Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, so this is, let me close that down. So 
So this is uh, changes to uh, gender restriction. Now, whereas in the previous case, um, I think there's only two publishers that are using age range. Um, we're proposing changes here that will affect a number of published feeds. So it will have an impact in terms of uh, making some of that existing data invalid. Um, but looking at existing data for gender restrictions, um, people are using uh, male, female, and mixed as values, which uh, is, is all the spec recommended. So just a literal value, but there's variation in spelling, casing, um, and some people are using men, women, rather than male, female. So when we discussed this as a group, um, the suggestion was that we should switch to using rather rather than literal values, we should have a URI. Um, and we um, decided to use, have three URIs in the open active namespace, one for male, one for female, and one for mixed. Um, Nick has pointed out already in the comments that there is a typo in these URLs. They should be HTTP and it should be a hash rather than a slash at the end there. So I need to fix that up. But essentially, you would have to use one of these URIs um, so again, the, there needs to be some uh, defaults. If it's not specified, we need to be clear about how to interpret it. So if gender restriction is not supplied, then consumers should assume that it is mixed. Um, uh, a value of mixed means that the event has no gender restriction, so it is suitable for everyone. Um, if it's, the value is male, then it's restricted to those people who have the male gender, female likewise. Um, I checked the kind of language and it seemed to fit what um, GDS have been recommending around you know, use of the word gender and um, some of the terminology there because I wanted to kind of to, to sanity check that. Um, but again, it's kind of a relatively simple, simple change. We're changing the gender restriction property from a literal value to a URI and we've defined those URIs in our namespace. Um, so the, the only thing that I was wary about is the fact that it would invalidate these these feed, feeds, um, but a couple of them are invalid anyway because they're using the wrong values. Um, the, the minimal change would have been just to, to be more explicit about um, what values to you know what literal values to use. But I think on on the whole, using your eyes is better, and I think is consistent with what we'll, what we are doing or, or plan to do in other areas. Uh, so that's that one. Does anyone have any uh, comments or thoughts on that? Should um, the code just ignore invalid values of those posters? Just thinking of the guys who are doing bad data. Um, obviously, this, this, it has, must be one of these, but is that an error condition or is that a quietly ignored type condition? Uh, let me check what I put in the spec. So I said it must be one of those three values. Um, and I've said that if it's not specified, then you should assume it was mixed. Um, so yeah, in the case where we have, we know that there are values out there that don't, that don't meet these requirements. Um, we've got, uh, I think probably two options. We could say that consumers could support other values. Um, and it's up to them to define, you know, what they what they process. Or we could say that an invalid value should be. We should assume it's mixed. But that, I don't think either of those are ideal. Um, my my the, the ideal thing here would be to engage directly with those uh, those list of publishers and try to get them to fix up the feed because it would be quite a straightforward fix in terms of implementation. I think just a kind of conditional in the existing code. Nick, I don't know how many of those are kind of in, are currently published with code that um, either the ODI or admin, or IMIN or others have got access to, so that you change quickly. Um, I say half are quick to change, and the other half are going to be slower to change. But that's that's something that we can work with people to change. So, uh, is there, so have you got, is there any suggestions on what I could, uh, any text put into the spec to do with invalid values? 
And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, just based on the way that filtering works, whether having a default of mixed is sensible. I, I would recommend actually, given the lack of data in, in general that we've got, um, kind of data quality issues that we've got around, I would suggest that null and not specified is taken as not known rather than mixed, because otherwise you might end up um, returning the wrong, if you filter on mixed things, you want to get mixed things back. Um, whereas you might get women only stuff back that just hasn't got that data at the time. Right. I mean, what, what's the, but what's the kind of, kind of common practice that would, would an event, if, if nobody's put gender restriction in, what would an event typically be open to everyone? I mean, it's, it just depends on the, the audience, so on, on the event. So you might have a, a, an event that, that in the title says female only um, and doesn't have a gender restriction because that data isn't being, isn't being fed through from that data source. Um, so I guess the, we run the risk of the default is, is, is should be taken as mixed of getting conflicting uh, data out. I, I mean, arguably, if, they, if, if all the things from a particular provider, such as good gym, are mixed, they should specify mixed in order to appear in the maximum number of filters. Right. So it's okay. So I could revise this then and just say that if it's if it's not supplied or is an invalid value then it should be treated as a, a kind of null and not be included in any filtering. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could you could also allow for custom values, but I don't know what the use cases would be there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just not to kind of deliberately invalidate things, but um, it also opens the door for more misuses. Sure, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's good to keep that for now and make noise. This is useful feedback. I have a quick question uh, mm -hmm. in general about the, the philosophy towards invalid records. So, you know, taking that as an account, would, would you typically say, okay, I'm going to ignore the whole of that field if I don't recognize what it says? I'm thinking about the must cases. Would you, would you ignore the whole of Does it make an invalid record because, you know, some. Uh, Certainly some uh, API specs will just puke up the whole thing and say, no, I can't deal with that. And others are much more tolerant about, okay, I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to pass it through, do you strip it out? Um, how, how does uh, Open Active typically approach records that contain some invalid data but broadly are well structured? Um, so I think I'm just going to check, see what we've got in the specification. Um, there may yeah, so that, I mean, it's perhaps not ex explicitly spelled out in the way that you just stated it, but in the kind of the extending the model section, it says that consumers should be liberal in what they accept. So that would argue for um, not invalidating the, uh, like a whole event just because one property was invalid. It just means that you, you can't necessarily adequately describe that for some, um, for some consumers. So, you know, if gender restriction is missing or meeting point is missing there's no reason not to provide what to you know to provide what you can to a user or to aggregate what you can um, and that approach is then consistent with people being able to add custom properties or us to be able to evolve the model in future to add new things in without requiring everybody to have to agree to um, you know, process them or be ready to process them at the same time okay so they draw their own line about Okay, if this is missing or malformed, I simply can't do anything with this record, and that's that's their decision. And, uh, as long as it's um, 
as you say, as long as it accepts as much as possible and works with as much as possible, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. thanks for that. Sorry, it was a little bit of a sideline, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it's, 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 a, it's, a, uh, it's a good question. And we, there is, um, we need to tighten up some of this stuff over time so that we can improve the quality of the data. We, we do have some stuff in here already about what we consider to be required or recommended fields. But there's no, no tooling at the moment to enforce that. Um, and I'll, I, I've separately filed an issue, which we can look at briefly in a moment, um, about uh, being a bit more explicit about um, how we're intending to use some of these properties to kind of help, um, to, to help with these kind of validation use cases. Um, this, okay, so that's, that's gender. Let's tick that one off. Um, the next one is um, facilities, which we've been discussing for quite some time. Um, and so it's had, a, I think, what I think is pretty thorough review from, from the community. Um, so I'm going to just jump to the specs. It probably has highlights this a little bit better. Um, so we are adding a new, uh, new type to the model, which we're, current, we're now calling facility use rather than amenity use, which was a previous suggestion that I made. And this is a, pro a basically a product. It's an, it's an uh, uh, offer to use some facility um, at a particular place, point in time. So a facility would be associated with the location. It would um, say what, uh, what type of activity would be taking place there and then have uh, a number of slots associated with it to allow somebody to decide if they want to book that facility at a particular point in time. So we've had a couple of calls already to, to review this. The last bits of feedback that I had was to change the naming from amenity use to facility use. Um, we discussed about uh, pricing models. Um, sometimes there might be a single price for the use of the facility regardless of the time of day. Other times there might be um, pricing for individual slots. So we've already got support for that in the model because we can associate offers with the facility use or for the individual offers. Um, there was uh, some suggestion that it would be useful to be able to indicate uh, how many facilities are available. So um, how many football pitches or table tennis courts are available, table tennis tables or tennis courts are available at 10 a.m. Um, and there is already uh, support for that in schema.org. There's an inventory level property that allows you to say how many are available. Without, so that supports that without having to go into all of the detail of describing all of those individual uh, facilities. Um, and the, the other thing that we um, discussed at, at length um, was that the proposed model, work, we feel it works well for, um, let's try to find another bit here, um, works well for um, facilities like uh, facilities that are primarily um, single use and there's lots of um, there's this potential for some churn in the paging in, in the feeds that uh, people are publishing um, for multi-use facilities so where a sports hall can be divided up in 16 different ways for different activities booking one of those things will immediately change what configuration is left available for other people to book which requires a lot of updates and feeds and where we got to on that is that we we said we would go ahead with the current proposal um, but we would um, put a note into the specification to say that we want to get some feedback from implementers on the level of churn level of overhead that actually results from using this um, at, you know actually means in practice so rather than guess on on the impact, we'd wait and see what, what happened and then decide whether we wanted to uh, deal with multi-use location, multi-use facilities in a different way or rethink what we are doing. So there's now this green block here, there's a note in the specification and I've uh, created a separate issue um, in the backlog, um, which describes what I've just said in a much more coherent way. Um, so spells out what, the, what, what discussion we had what the potential issues are, and there's some links there to the previous to previous videos where uh, other people were, were kind of summarising some of the options. 
So basically the, the decision was to kind of track this and to see how it works in practice uh, rather than spend more time on, on the modeling because we know that this is blocking um, people publishing um, some of this data. Uh, quick, no, quick note, Lee, uh, there's no time zone on that well, example. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, might be worth double checking that across the spec. I've raised an issue already around that in the, uh, but in, uh, in the back box, but uh, might be good as, in the schedules as well. I think there's an issue, so. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, other than that, any, any comments or thoughts? I say other than that kind of multi-use facility issue, I think this is a, a, a pretty reasonable amount of attention, attention from people and, and those people like Jamie, um, uh, and Tom have seemed feel comfortable that this works for them. Well, one comment would be that I'm part of the work that we're doing in Fusion right now is to implement this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's worth holding off on including it in the spec until at least one person has tried to implement it um, to test it, kind of, it works overall, or if you feel that it's better to just get it in the spec and then change it once it's in there. Because I, I, I know we haven't really tested it in, in anger. It's kind of hypothetically there, but. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to, to just to go ahead with, with publishing it because some of the remedies that we talked about weren't actually going to involve changes to the model. It was going to involve changes to, for example, how some of this data might get surfaced in, in feeds. Um, you know, we talked about splitting out some of that into separate feeds so they can be aggregated separately. Um, we talked about different approaches to surfacing the availability data, which is the actual th thing, that, the, the churn. So none of that necessarily meant a change to the data model. Um, anything that we might do to special case multi-use facilities would end up adding to the model, I think. Um, but I, I'm kind of wary about that because there's a whole bunch of complexity about describing those configurations. I wasn't talking so much about multi-use necessarily. It was more... Um just just having someone implement it in practice at all um but yeah that makes sense i mean getting it in and then changing it i know previously we've, we've been a little bit more hesitant to get things in before they've got implementations in place um and uh, i know that in the old process we had things in beta for a while before we moved them into the main spec now in a new process we're obviously going to have a proposal sitting there for a while until we move into the main spec um i just didn't know whether yeah we are we calling for implementers at proposal stage in order to prove the concept before pushing into the actual spec process. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, a good point. Um, the, the, I think the right approach will depend on, um, yeah, it will depend on what, the, I guess, the level of the change um, and how ready people are to to move forward. I mean, the reason we did this is that there seemed to be a clear message that people were blocked. Um, so I, I was kind of keen to just kind of move forward because those people who said they were blocked were happy with the, the approach. So, but you're, you're right that we could we could delay it further, could take it out, but. Um, um, well, I guess potentially what I'm proposing is you could you could copy the bit of the spec that's in there or something into into the proposal and have people implement the, so it's there because that's what people want, uh, and then and then at the point where we've got something working, um, we could. I'm just thinking if basically the second you start coding this thing, so there'll be you'll notice something, right? There'll be a type that doesn't make sense or there'll be a thing that you know, doesn't, doesn't work um, but if, if no one's actually got to, to coding stage yet with it then I guess the potential is that we put something in 1.1 that needs an immediate tweak and then it makes it undermines the value of I guess I suppose it depends on what, what, what point release is supposed to represent but if these things are supposed to be stable and um, robust then maybe that undermines it a little bit um, unless they're supposed to be more experimental Um, yeah, well, I don't think we can decide that now because we don't have the right people on the call. Um, uh, 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I've separately, uh, when Jamie left his apologies, I've, I've contacted, you know, asked him to look at it to see whether he's happy. Um, one one thing I could do is, is, is talking to Plage, I know, because he's not um, from here either, but see if they can implement this in the timescales of the, before this goes to, to release. That might help. Um, or if it's every if every couple of months, then because I know he's about to start coding, so it's just a case of yeah. So if it doesn't get one point one, then it will be the, it will do another registers draft in a month, and then one point two will be two months away. So it will be um, in beta for two months. Um, got it. Okay. Why don't we take this? Why don't we take this to, to Jamie and to to Dave and see if we can get get them to start looking at it a bit earlier, as in like if we can look at this week, um, the next three days, then uh, and code something. Then that would give us enough. We've got at least one implement. Yeah. Okay. But if we can get some feedback this week, I mean, because I mean, broadly, what you I think you you're just. I guess there's a, there's a couple of potential issues. One that it's not well documented enough for people to implement, which is not necessarily a blocker. Uh, the other one is just that the model itself doesn't work. Um, but I, 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 based on feedback from Jamie, Tom, uh, and um, who else is from? Um, Raymond as well said that he was happy with the model. That um, that in principle that is workable. Sure. Okay. Could you call this spec a release candidate spec and say that if there's no changes within two weeks, then it becomes a full spec? Is that one way to sort of buy a bit of time on this? Well, the, that's kind of what, what we're doing with the editor's draft. So okay. there has been an editor's draft for two months um, with the previous version of this. Um, so the proposal I, we've been discussing it for a while, the proposal that I put in, in the end of Feb was in an editor's draft. Um, we've discussed that editor's draft in GitHub and on previous calls, and then I released that update a week ago. Cool. So I just suggest we, um, we, uh, ping those people that have been actively looking at this in the next couple of days. Um, and if they're not happy, then I will take it out of the specification and it will uh, go back in line for the next release. Yeah, or, or alternatively, maybe, maybe um, it's, I guess it's a, just a principle thing, isn't it? But maybe we just say that if there's something that's had a significant amount of community review, then we're happy for it to go in, even if there's no implementations. And this is a kind of... Well, that, well that's, the, that's currently what we have we have documented as the process and that's that's kind of what so we have i mean that the original whole original version of the specification obviously wasn't implemented because we have to have something for people to work against so um the implementation so the the government's doc, governor's document i circulated recently just says that we it's okay to move forward as long as there's agreement that we've had we felt like we've had sufficient debate and discussion in the community there's agreement from different different groups of people and that was enough to go in um, we haven't been explicit about having an implementation requirement um, we can do that but that would be a kind of an addition to where we are currently sure got it I, I, I think there was kind of a yeah I feel like there was an implementation requirement around by the time we got to 1.0 of the model uh, when we did 1.0 I think we took some things out because no one had implemented them um, but that, that was 1.0 is more link spec. So like, maybe that's only for major releases or, um, yeah. Um, I, think, I think for this case, um, because of the few people are doing facilities wanting to move quickly, we can probably get someone to look at it by the end of the week. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll ping them after this. Uh, that the guys looking at the um, build only groups, so we can do that. Okay. Okay, um, so the next issue, so this hasn't been edited into the spec yet, but again, we talked about it um, I think a fortnight ago, a month ago, um, is about uh, describing amenities available at a place. Um, 
And for the most part, this is just agreeing to use existing features of schema.org. Um, so there was already a way within schema.org to say that a, you can see the example here, that a place has a community feature, which is an array of uh, features. So you say, um, give it a name, you say a value of true or false to say whether it's provided. The, the only thing that we are, uh, I think we are changing or suggesting as an addition is uh, um, what schema.org does is say that um, an immediacy feature is what's called a location feature specification, which is a bit of a mouthful, um, and it has a name and this true or false value. Um, uh, what, what I didn't want to do is to recommend use of this and then people just have lots of used lots of different values in the name. So, you know, a changing facility could be changing facility, changing facilities, changing room, changing rooms. So it wanted to have some um, more specific types to make it easier for people to aggregate and filter on the data consistently. So what the specification will include once I've revised it is define some new subtypes of location feature specification. Um, the, the list that we discussed on the call was to do, have a type for changing rooms, showers, public toilets, lockers, towels, crash, parking, baby change, equipment hire, and then floodlights, although there's been a feedback from Nick that maybe floodlights is, it should be handled separately because it's more of a feature of the place rather than a separate amenity. Um, so uh, there's some examples. If it's useful, I can say from that list above that the ones that have been implemented, uh, changing rooms, showers, public toilets, lockers, towels, uh, crash and parking uh, have been implemented. So Nick Evans from, uh, you can see we've had a, a thumbs up on this, so at least somebody's happy. Um, Nick Evans from Sport England suggested some other options, which you might want to consider. Cycle parking, Wi-Fi, cafe, vending machines, spa, steam room, sauna, etc. Um, what I was leaning towards is to go with this list to start with because we'd at least we'd had I think we'd had like three or four people on the call kind of reviewing that start with that and then we can always add more types later because this is a pretty lightweight change to the specification because this is all existing schema.org stuff apart from defining those new types where the spec doesn't define a type then you can still use this style you can just still say it's a location feature specification and free Wi-Fi. It's not that you can't state that, it's just at the moment we haven't given it as an explicit type. So it gives us a way to people to publish what data they have and we can later kind of introduce um, into the spec the extra definitions. Does that seem a reasonable approach? So I'd be interested in, in challenging, um, I know floodlights has already been challenged, but I'd be interested in challenging equipment hire as being quite generic. Um, mm -hmm. What does that mean to someone that's, if there's an equipment hire on a, on a place, what equipment, you know, is that useful? Um, and also because no one's implemented that as well, and the same with floodlights, um, whether that's worth, uh, yeah, not, not excluding, you know, just having. Okay. Baby changing is probably in the same category as toilets. Probably more obvious. But no one's actually done that one. Okay. Any other thoughts? No. Okay. Um, the so those are the ones that are in the, in the spec. There is there's there's a number of other open proposals. There's one that, um, that uh, came from EMD around special requirements. I need to put in the. I don't think we can really discuss that today because we don't have the relevant people here. Um, but I've got. I'm going to update the issue with that. Um, we're getting close to end of time. But I, as I said, I said I would show the, the issue around tightening up. 
Um, I was going to say, if there's, if there's time, I'd also be interested to just, um, there's one about eligible customer type, one about consistent levels, um, but, um, if there's time. They're, they're both quite simple and we've got quite a, a, a number of implementations already on both. Uh, okay, I need to, I need to. Do you mind if you come back to that? Because I'm not sure I'm going to have time to put it in for one point one. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we pick that up next time. Sure. Um, I, I want because we because we touched on it. I wanted to briefly uh, just draw your attention to, we don't have to kind of discuss all of it now, but draw your attention to issue 78, which is about um, it's a proposal to restrict the usage of some of the properties to be make them more consistent. So there are a number of properties in the spec at the moment that can have um, different values. They can be a string, they can be an object, they can be an array of strings, an array of objects, um, some people are using strings when and others are using numbers. Um, so that all, all of that flexibility comes from schema.org and to date we've been happy to use that because it provides people with some flexibility in how they publish their data. However, we know that we need to improve uh, that data quality over time and the only way to do that really is to start to, to restrict those values and to be a bit more prescriptive about what we expect people to, to do. So like, for example, moving to always using an array, even if it's got a single value for properties that might reasonably have multiple values, makes you, means you can access it consistently in code. So what I've done in this proposal is I've identified 10 um, suggested, 10 changes. These aren't two specific properties, but 10 things that we can like, start to put into, into the specification to start to tighten this up. Um, so some of it's kind of just obvious things like numbers should be numbers rather than strings. Um, properties with, with multiple, that will have multiple values must always be arrays. So activity would always be an array. Um, if a property can have different values, string or objects, then we should say what our preferred default is. So we don't just leave it open to anyone to choose. We kind of say this is what you should do. Um, including time zones, um, duration properties should be durations, uh, emitting null values, um, emitting empty arrays, emitting empty strings, um, making sure that type is always required, um, and there's some stuff around URL and ID. Now each of these uh, we can probably have a whole debate around. Um, so I'm just like, so I'm just drawing attention to it and it'd be good to get some feedback on the general principles on here and then I've got a to do in the proposal to indicate how like which properties we start to apply this to. Um, quick one on eight it says must be specified as null and that's not consistent with it previously it says null should not be included and should be omitted potentially eight should be omitted rather than specified as null. So which one do you say it was inconsistent with? Uh, six. Yeah, so it, it's, I don't think it's entirely inconsistent. It's like you shouldn't include null values, but um, if you are choosing to include null values, then you should make sure that empty strings are null values rather than have a mixture of nulls and empty strings. Oh, okay, so that's what it means, sure. Just so that you don't, you don't have to always be checking that stuff. Um, but it, this is like I see this is on the kind of first step of some things that we might want to introduce for 1.2 onwards to start to tighten up the tighten up the validation rules. Um, so yeah, so please please take a look at that. Um, so in just we've got last couple of minutes, uh, unless there's other things that people want to raise on the. The booking work, so we've been giving regular updates to that. 
there haven't really been any substantial changes to the specifications since we spoke last. What we are in the process of doing um, is moving from the Google Doc that um, is currently holding uh, version 0 0.4, I'm um, going to move that into our standard specification template. So it's a web page. Um, and as part of doing that, we then will also have a separate issue list in GitHub so that we can stay on top of um, discussions. There is already a, I've set up a um, project board in the, the GitHub repo we'll be using to hold the spec, which is the open booking API repo. Um, start to file a bunch of issues, tasks and things to do in order to move that forward. Um, so in future calls, we'll be, um, we'll be focusing on that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight is we've been, uh, as well as the Google Doc, we've been sharing um, a uh, Swagger specification. Um, we'll, we'll keep that, but it will be a won't be the normative version of the spec. We'll try and put everything in the main spec, but this is useful for people to kind of navigate. So we're going to try and we're going to keep it up to date. But within here, there is now much more than just booking. And I want to make sure that the booking specific bits are, are, are clearer. Um, so there is mixed in amongst the endpoints around you know, customers, orders, etc. There's stuff um, that is what I've been calling a opportunity data API. It's a API endpoints to get lists of locations, to get to search for sessions, to search for activities. That is going to get broken out into a separate spec because it's not about booking. Um, so we'll end up having a separate opportunity data API spec um, that will cover um, those endpoints. We'll probably just keep one Swagger document that's got all of this stuff in it just to make it easy to reference. But in terms of kind of specifying the behavior around that, it's too much to do in one document. So moving that out um, will make that a bit more manageable um, and also help people kind of focus people's attention on the bits that they're most interested in. So the goal is to have the um, a, what will be 0 0.5 of the booking spec in template by 4th of May. Um, there's not going to be any substantial changes to the content, just probably some just minor revisions to um, the structure and wording in a few places. So it'll be effectively kind of consistent. Uh, and then we'll start to iterate from it from there. Um, so that's where we are with booking. Um, any questions or thoughts on that? No. Um, anything else that anyone wants to raise on the call today? No? Okay. Um, so our next calls are. Did I mean second? I didn't mean the second of May. I meant the ninth of May. Um, there we go. Easily fixed. Um, the 9th of May, it clashes with the Elevate Conf, so I need to reschedule it. Um, so I'll, I'll send an email around to the mailing list and see if people if, if people can would prefer to do the call earlier or later in the week, um, or whether we just choose to um, skip one, just to see what works uh, for people, um, and just confirm the, the focus. Um, because we've got a couple of different threads of activity, um, we'll have to decide the best way to organize these calls ongoing, whether we want to try and cover a bit of both in each one or whether we want to more closely theme each call around, for example, booking versus uh, opportunity model. I suspect that because there are likely different audiences for that, we might want to just focus the calls. Um, but I'm keen to make sure that we get into the process of doing this kind of review before we're doing point releases of specifications to make sure that um, uh, we're giving everybody up as many opportunities as possible to feed in before stuff gets into um, released versions of specs. Um, so, I, so unless anyone has got anything else, then I think I'm going to wind up the call today. Um, no. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you all for coming. And thanks for the discussion. It's useful to capture those uh, few improvements.
um, and I'll get those edited in. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All right. Cheers, then. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.